Number one, George Washington Carver. Born as an enslaved American, George Washington Carver never knew his original date of birth. It is estimated sometime in the mid to late 1860s. Carver was accepted at Highland University in Kansas, and upon arriving, they refused to let him in because of his race. Carter then traveled by wagon in 1886 to Ness County, Kansas, where he homesteaded a claim of land where he maintained a small area of plants and flowers. Carver manually plowed 17 acres of the claim, planting rice, corn, Indian corn, garden produce, as well as fruit trees, forest trees, and shrubbery while earning money doing odd jobs in town and working as a ranch hand. In 1891, Carver became the first African-American student to attend Iowa State. Carver's bachelor thesis for a degree was Plants as Modified by Man. Carver continued obtaining his master's degree while working on pathology and mycology, gaining national recognition and respect as a botanist and earning his Master of Science degree in 1896. That same year, Booker T. Washington, the first principal and president of the Tuskegee Institute, now Tuskegee University, invited Carver to head its agricultural department. Carver taught there for 47 years, developing the, the department into a strong research center, teaching crop rotation and introducing several alternative cash crops for farmers that would also improve the soil of areas heavily cultivated with cotton. Carver developed 300 uses for peanuts and hundreds more for soybeans, pecans, and sweet potatoes. Giving most of his inventions away and only having three patents issued to him during his lifetime. Among his numerous discoveries are adhesives, axle grease, bleach, buttermilk, chili sauce, linoleum, metal polish, paper, plastic, pavement, shaving cream, shoe polish, and many others. Carver took a bad fall down a flight of stairs and was found unconscious by a maid who took him to the hospital. George Washington Carver passed away on January 5th, 1943 at the age of 79 from complications also with anemia resulting from his fall. He is interred next to Booker T. Washington at Tuskegee University. Carver's life savings totaled $60,000, all of which he donated to the Carver Museum and to the George Washington Carver Foundation. On his grave it is written, He could have added fortune to fame, but caring for neither, he found happiness and honor in being helpful to the world. Number 2 Mary Anderson was born in Burton Hill Plantation in Greene County, Alabama at the start of Reconstruction in 1866. In 1889, she moved to Birmingham, Alabama and soon became a real estate developer, building the Fairmont Apartments on Highland Avenue. In 1893, Anderson left Birmingham to operate a cattle ranch and vineyard in Fresno, California. In 1898, she returned to Birmingham to help care for her ailing aunt. In 1903, Mary took a trip to New York City and on a frosty day observed the trolley driver struggling to see past the windows because of the falling sleet. The trolley's car's windows was designed for bad weather visibility, but its multi-lane windshield system worked very poorly. The driver needed to open the window to lean out the vehicle or even stop the trolley to go outside and wipe the windscreen with his hands. Anderson, who was not an engineer, but an entrepreneur, identified the problem and its opportunity. She envisioned a windshield wiper blade that could be operated from inside the trolley by the driver. Returning back to Alabama, she hired a designer for a hand-operated device to keep a windshield clear and had a local company to produce a working model. She applied for, and in 1903, was granted a 17-year patent for a windshield wiper. 
The patent application filed on June 18, 1903, and on November 10, 1903, the patent office awarded Mary patent number 743801 for her windshield cleaning device. The device consisted of a lever inside the vehicle that controlled a rubber blade on the outside of the windshield. In 1903, when Mary applied for the patent, cars were still not popular across the United States. The Model A had not even been produced by Henry Ford yet. After the patent expired in 1920 and the automobile manufacturing business grew, so did windshield wipers using Mary's design, and that became the standard across all cars. And in 1922, Cadillac became the first car to adopt them as standard equipment. Mary never married and never had any kids either. She never profited from the patent and managed the Fairmont Apartments in Birmingham until her passing at the age of 87. She passed away at her summer home in Mont Eagle, Tennessee. She is buried in Elmwood Cemetery. Number three. Born in Addison, Alabama in 1915, Maxwell Emmett Buttram, who was known as Pat Buttram, had a distinctive voice that in his own words, never quite made it through puberty. Born to a Methodist minister in Addison, Alabama, the family of eight moved to Nauvoo, and eventually he graduated from Mortimer Jordan High School, then located in Morris, Alabama, and entered the Birmingham Southern College for Methodist Ministry. Buttram performed in college plays and did local radio become a regular on the National Barn Dance, which was broadcast on WLS AM out of Chicago. In the 1940s, Buttram went west to Hollywood and became a sidekick to Roy Rogers, who was later dropped due to Rogers already having multiple sidekicks already. Returning from World War II, Gene Autry, who was enlisted in the U.S. Army Corps, picked Buttram to work with him. The pair together starred in more than 40 films and over 100 episodes of Autry's television show. Buttram also played the role of Mr. Eustace Haney in the television comedy Green Acres, Napoleon the Hound Dog and the Aristocrats, the Sheriff of Nottingham and Robin Hood, Chief Hunting Dog and the Fox and the Hound, and even one of the Toon Bullets in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. His final voiceover was released a year after his passing where he played a hillbilly character in a goofy movie. Buttram passed away in 1994 at the age of 78 due to kidney failure at UCLA Medical Center. In 1988, Buttram was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Number 4 Best known for her 1960 novel To Kill a Mockingbird, it won the 1961 Pulitzer Prize and has become a classic of modern American literature. Lee published only two books, yet she was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2007 for her contribution to literature. She also received numerous honorary degrees, though she declined to speak on those occasions. She assisted her close friend Truman Capote in his research for the book In Cold Blood. Capote was the basis for the character Dill Harris in To Kill a Mockingbird. Harper Lee passed away in her sleep on the morning of February 19th, 2016, at the age of 89. Prior to her death, she lived in Monroeville, Alabama. On February 20th, her funeral was held at First United Methodist Church in Monroeville. The service was attended by close family and friends, and the eulogy was given by Wayne Flint. Number 5 George Lindsay was born in Fairfield, Alabama. He was raised by his grandparents in the small town of Jasper, where he graduated from Walker County High School in 1946. He attended Kemper Military School in Boonville, Missouri, and Florence State Teachers College, now the University of North Alabama, where he majored in physical education and biology. In 1956, 
George taught at Hazel Green High School in Hazel Green, Alabama, while waiting to be accepted by the American Theater Wing in New York City. On March 24, 1960, he appeared on the To Tell the Truth television quiz show, posing as a Florida Spear fisherman and ultimately revealing himself as a nightclub comic. After graduating from the wing and performing in two Broadway plays, Wonderful Town and All-American, he moved to Los Angeles in 1962. He got parts in TV series of the day, including Gunsmoke, The Ralphle Man, The Real McCoys, The Twilight Zone, Daniel Boone, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, and three episodes of the Alfred Hitchcock Hour before he got the role he would become famous for as Goober on The Andy Griffith Show. In 1964, Lindsay was cast as the slow-witted but kindly Goober Beasley on The Andy Griffith Show. His character was later renamed Goober Powell to tie him to his cousin Gomer Powell, slow-witted country boy played by Jim Neighbors, also from Alabama. During an interview TV segment of TV Land's 40th Anniversary Star Trek Marathon on November 12, 2006, Leonard Nimoy stated that Gene Roddenberry's first choice to play Spock was George Lindsay. Lindsay passed away on March 6, 2012 in Nashville, Tennessee from heart failure. He was 83 and was buried at Oak Hill Cemetery in his hometown of Jasper, Alabama. <laughs>